Hey, welcome back everybody. Gene Fetty here for Kiko Body Repair Products with another one of our Friday live streams. Today, we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna do a tool demo, a little K-Beam 101 for you. And then instead of me or another uh, instructor talking about our teaching repairs, uh, we're actually gonna showcase one of your repairs. So make sure you stick around to see the repair we show off today. So let's dive right in. Uh, let me get a thumbs up if we've got good audio and everything. I would like to make sure that this system's working. Uh, while we're at it, here is the K-beam. This is our bridge lifter, right? Bridges have been around a long time. This is our version for GPR. The feet slide in and out. Of course, as with a lot of our system, everything is adjustable. These rotate around, the pads articulate. You can also, because it is a system, switch out to other feet. So I can grab one of our crease killer feet, pop it right on there. And now we've got an even bigger area to spread out. If we need to hold an area down, if we are stuck in the middle of a door and need to spread that out more so we don't end up creating damage, whatever it takes, this system works. Also, our adapters go on. So it's just our simple finger nut. This slides on, and this is what grabs onto our tabs. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we did a little K-Bar 101. And inside of there, I talked about the K-Pod, which is this little foot right here that allows you to turn your K-Bar into a beam. And in fact, it was on the front door of this car. Let me switch cameras and I wanna show you sort of how this works. So when we come over to here, right, we can still use this as a beam. We've got some maneuverability, but we run into some, uh, I don't wanna say restrictions, limitations. So let's get that foot down, slide this in here. So already you can see that one, uh, I don't have nearly the throw that I have. You'll see how much easier the K-beam is to set up, but I've almost got to take this all the way in to be able to get it on. In fact, huh, where this dent is at, I may not even be able to get this onto here all the way. Yeah, we will. So you also saw how this foot comes off, so it will work. However, definitely more limiting there we go so you can see a couple of the limitations here and, and honestly this is exactly where i started out i, I was going to make my first purchase you know with big gpr and looking at it i thought okay let me get the k bar and i'll just add this foot and then i won't even need the k beam well i quickly learned how much uh, this is restrictive so these feet are fixed this one is fixed at the end so i can slide if I loosen up, I can slide in and out here. I get no articulating of the feet around. It's just static, it's here, it's on this flat and that's it. If I needed to be this way a little bit, you can see how this foot sticks to the bottom and not to the top or vice versa. And we would get a little uh, wonky to say the least. So it's not a bad place to start. However, it is a very limiting uh, beam and not very adjustable, but it is somewhere you can start. Let me show you, however, the difference when we switch over to our K-beam. Perfect, thanks Brock, appreciate it buddy. So when we go back to the K-beam, I'll bring my feet over, we have got, make sure we're on camera, yeah. So when we're back with the beam, now instead of that fixed foot, I can move these in and out wherever I would like. And I've got probably, uh, I'm gonna make a guess, 50 or 60% more throw or reachability uh, on the main shaft here. So we can come in, I can spin this in. This also has a quarter inch adapter where we can, uh, if we want to, 
put a drill on. In fact, in the repair that's coming up that you're gonna see, you will see just how well that drill works. So what I'm able to do here is take these feet, place them in between the two panels, spread the um, force of the pull across both edges. We know that's super strong and above and below this body line and lock this in. I can lock, take and slide my adapter into the middle, lock this in. And then because we're not out of the edge of the panel, we're sort of in where it's soft. I'll go ahead and stick with my uh, crease killer foot, put it this way, right up to the body line, spreading the, the force out over a nice area. And then we simply start to apply some pressure. And that's as simple as turning this out. Stick a screw gun on and you can run it. When I'm teaching, I like to do it by hand. When I'm working in production, I definitely like to throw a screw gun on it and go. This now, as you can see, becomes a second set of hands for me. I don't have to hold anything here while we start to apply pressure. So we could, we've got some nice crowning going on. I'm able to load this up. I like to go in increments of four turns once I'm into a load, not to overload it. And now I can grab a slappy, no slapper, and put it on here, holding tension out and begin to make strikes. I can also come in if I wanted to with a hammer and begin to make strikes. I can put myself over here where I can see with the light exactly where I need to go. This really gives us what we call a double action move. So we are pulling the low and while we're holding some tension there, we're able to come in and correct this high spot. Tech tip here, do not go under as hard of a load as it can uh, do. This will pull, it's tested up to about 1500 pounds of power. If you pull maxed out, what happens is it puts a lot of pressure on the glue. And as we begin to knock this down, it actually sends some shock waves into the glue and that uh, shocks the glue and makes it want to break and snap away. So just ease into it, back the tension down a little bit and begin to correct your crowns just like that. Make a few moves. And then again, I like to go in increments of four, four more turns, one, two, three, four. Any of the knockdown tools will work in here. When I'm not using a slapper, I like to keep a hand on this just in case it does release, it's not going to become any kind of projectile. So guys, do you have any questions on this? Let me walk over here and check this out. Hey, Mohammed, thanks for coming. What's up, Ryan Shutt? Thanks for joining in today. Good deal. <clears throat> so that is a little bit of K-Beam 101, right? We're able to articulate these around, get these feet spreading the, the force across different parts of the repair, swapping out feet to get a bigger, uh, wider push <laughs> in the repair I'm going to show you, uh, they even took the slappers and uh, on the repair, put this under the feet to even spread it out further. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a little frog in my throat today. Now, we can continue to pull. And as this moves, it adds more pressure to your... Uh, crowns and high spots and just continue working through. That is how we would progress through here until it's time to release. Now to release your tabs, very simple because we don't want to over pull. Grab our 99% isopropyl solution. Also our cleaning agent for when we're prepping the panel. Just get it under a load. Get some alcohol on there and just let it work for a second. If you're sticking like this with a beam and it doesn't quite want to let go, take your pressure off and just simply move your adapter out onto the edge and it will help shear it off. This also is like another great teaching point here. I always like my adapter to be centered on the damage, centered on my tab. Here is the reason why. You saw even with the alcohol, how that was pulling, it didn't want to let go. When you get out onto the edge, 
you're no longer uh, pulling straight out with all the power of the tab or all the surface area. And it actually wants to do just that and shear off. So you can see how this side of the tab where we had a little bit of pressure released and this stayed on one pull in the middle of your tab and two if you're stuck just slide out to the edge and really a very minimal amount of pressure is all you need to get in there <clears throat> excuse me my goodness now i want to show you some of the just raw power that this tool has so i've stuck our one of our largest ice tabs on here cam auto glue now it's been on there for a little bit. I set it before the uh, stream started because this will take oh, four to seven minutes to set and I didn't want to do that uh, and just burn time watching glue dry. Now this cam auto does not mind taking a little bit of heat back in. So I'm just going to take my torch and just warm the panel around. And we'll just let that heat go back in. That helps to make it flexible. Uh, nice and easy. So let's see, we've got uh, Michael Hidrago. Thanks for coming in today. Ryan Harthcock is on deck. He's the one whose repair we're going to share. Thanks for coming in, Ryan. And Henderson, you had a question. How often do the tabs break, if ever at all? So Henderson, on these larger tabs, you know, like this first one we pulled here, or a tab like this, you are more likely to lose these tabs than break. On the other end, our smaller finishing tabs, uh, they can break, they are a semi-consumable. When that happens, uh, simply replace them. Uh, they don't break often. Uh, and there's some best practices. If you go back uh, through some of our older videos, I give some tips on helping to extend the life of the tabs. Uh, one of the tips to take along with that is to um, make sure you're charging for glue pull repair supplies. Uh, just like for body techs, if you're using a um, urethane sealer or a urethane kit for windows or seam sealer on a repair, anything like that, anything that's consumable, uh, you should be charging for. Glue is consumable. Our release agent is a consumable. The tabs are semi-consumable. Uh, myself here uh, on hail cars, we uh, charge, every car gets a charge for glue pull repair supplies. So whatever your cost is, whatever you seem is fair, um, go ahead and put that in there, but make sure you're getting it. Uh, very rare that they just break. Craig Reed, hello to you. So we've got it loaded up on a large tab. I wanna show you just how much power this has. In fact, let me change this camera angle a little bit for you. Coming a little bit tighter. There we go. So this being one of our larger tabs, using a 100 millimeter adapter on the K-beam with the feet in, this, you can actually see, let me back off a little bit, where I want you to look. So this is the back door. So we're actually doubled up here, just to show you how much power and control we have. And again, I think this video from Ryan or this repair from Ryan is really going to showcase this. Just the raw power that this has. Look right there. Watch how that edge wants to come out. Now, when we're at trade shows, I like to take the K-Beam Junior, which is a cut down version of this and put the feet in and we'll glue this tab on and let this thing sit here. We normally do two. We'll do one in the morning and then one after lunch and just let people feel, let me see if I can get my mic close to here. Listen to the chatter on these threads. That is showing you just how much power is there. It, enough to pull the edge of this door out. So a question we get is, uh, you know, does the glue stick and is it strong enough? Uh, there's more power here than we could ever need. And that's just with the beam, right? It's in fact, you can probably see a little bit of flex in with the beam great surface area and adhesion here and that 100 millimeter now let me release that and you should be able to hear 
just how much power is in there. Maybe. While we're standing here waiting for this, this sort of reminds me, if you can see, you can, oh, there it goes. So, nice release. Uh, it was on here. Let me pan up a little bit. So there's also a, it might be a power pod. Forgive me for the name. Maybe Brock can put the link in. We have an adapter that you take this off, take the cap off. There's a foot you can slide into the end and essentially turn the K beam into a large K bar. Uh, it doesn't quite have all the versatility of the K bar has for where it shines. But if you're choosing one, that power pod or the K pod, uh, again, Brock, please throw that link up in the description for me, uh, is another great way to get in there. So guys, I think I saw a couple of questions come in. Let me switch cameras here. Here we go. Uh, oh, hey, Dustin, uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, we, I think it caught some pulling because your comment wasn't there whenever I came and checked last time. Guys, any questions real quick on the K-beam before we jump into this repair? Again, it's uh, to review while I give you a chance to do questions. The K-beam is what we're talking about today. This is the regular size. There is an XL that's a little bit longer. The sled moves almost end to end. Get tons of versatility here. All of our adapters fit on. These feet articulate this way. Of course, the kidney shaped feet move around to get on whatever shape you need. It is all part of our system. So these crease killer feet fit right on there to help you spread out the force. You can pop this off and get the power pod, slide that on and give yourself a really large K bar. Great tool, super powerful and tons and tons of control. So I don't see any questions coming in. Nope. Guys, let's jump on into our new segment and let's talk about one of your repairs. So let me grab my knee pad here so I can get down. And let's see what we've got. So I hope that shows up well on your screen. We had uh, Ryan Harthcock uh, shared this post from Caraliner. So it's in the collision group. You can go ahead and get in there and check this out, read the comments. And I'm sure Ryan would be happy to uh, talk about any and everything in there. So let's take a little better look at the damage. Beautiful Porsche. I'm a Porsche guy through and through. It's one of my dream cars and I would be absolutely sick if this happened to mine. But let's take a look and see what we've got here. We're working on a quarter panel. Uh, I can imagine that that is a uh, sealed up panel. You know, your floor comes over and, and mounts in and your quarter panel wraps around the inner structure and it's shoved in there. Now, conventionally, if we were to use a stud welder on here, I'm not even sure that that's allowed uh, per Porsche. Again, consult your OE procedures. But what we've got is a nice push over the wheel well, a big old crown uh, that's the high spot you can see on the top and shoved through that body line. Perfect, Brock shared a link to the group where that's at. So let's take a look at what uh, was used here, how we went after it. Uh, it was all done with a manager or a collision level two kit is what it looks like we have here. So this gives you full control all the way to paintless. If paintless is possible and you have a technician that can do paintless, this kit and system will do that for you. Ryan was nice enough to share a video in the comments. Let's see how this plays yep. here. So you can see here, he's using the drill for the screw, uh, screw gun with that quarter inch adapter. You can see it's much quicker than what we were doing here while I was demoing. We've got a uh, centipede tab, working right around, right up against the body line, holding tension in, and now he's coming in with the JVF hammer. While he's holding tension out on that low, is able to work that crown down. Now, Ryan, if you're in here, I would love to know about how long actual work time you spent on this. Um, beautiful, beautiful repair. So you saw he's now, he started, added some tension, 
knocked down with the JBF hammer, that metal actually moves out and then your caving will actually get loose. He added some more tension and continued to work. So he would, or you would, as you're going through, just continue this process, moving a little bit at a time, working the highs down a little bit at a time. Pull the lows up, bring the highs down. What I want you to note here is, one, he's using the K-beam. <coughs> Excuse me again. He's got the feet uh, in and at the edge of the, uh, <laughs> in at the edge of the panel where it would meet the bumper. You can see on the right side, the side closest to us on the camera, he's got the blue slapper set up under the feet to help spread that out. On the far side, he's got the red slapper on there to help spread that out. So he's using the kidney shaped feet. Uh, he could have possibly used the crease killer feet and avoided needing to use the slapper, but either way, he's taking the whole system, thinking outside of the box a little bit and making it happen. Now, here is definitely a uh, restriction where if you were trying to do this with the K-bar, it's definitely out. You're just not gonna be able to get it in there. It likely may not have even, even been able to go wide enough to cover that repair. Working it up slowly, it looks like he's got the 100 millimeter adapter on there. Uh, tab placement, so if we go back to the repair, the tab placement, you can see he's got that, you've got the, the edge of the panel, and then, you know, in an inch, inch and a half, you've got that hard body line. And then above that, maybe two inches is where the crown is. Talking through tool choice uh, or tab choice, right? He wanted likely a curved centipede matched up to the body line without crossing it. And then in the video, it appears like he went below the body line because that's the stronger side, began to add that pressure and worked that crown down super clean. Now here, let me show you. Yes. If you zoom in, and I can't zoom in, uh, you can see that he was able to get that back really great. There's another picture, I thought I saved it. <clears throat> let me see if it's here. Where he's got the light, yeah, this one. Let's get this up here. This one here, uh, again, you might want to zoom in or and or hop in uh, to the group and you can blow these pictures up life size uh, or full screen, I mean. You can see that using the light, you're able to see all the detail. Uh, again, Ryan, I would think that you got that to completely glazable. A few huge, huge wins with this repair. One, uh, now, we didn't see this in primer or glaze. If that's all flat and he was able uh, to use glaze, it's a glazable repair, that glaze will stick to the paint. That means, first and foremost, we are able to leave that factory galvanization on the face of the panel and put our glaze right on top of that with the proper scratch. So we've got factory corrosion protection on the outside. On the other side, if it were repaired using a stud welder. And again, I can't say for sure that Porsche even allows that, but if they did, a traditional stud welder would have burned the backside of that panel. It's also very likely that if that were done, we could not be 100% sure that uh, all of the, the, the cavity wax and corrosion protection got everywhere and it would be compromised. Using GPR on this repair, we save that factory paint on the outside, the factory galvanization on the outside of the panel. And we did not have any burn through or anything like that on the back side of the panel. As long as all that inner structure is there and safe and the steams are good, there is nothing to worry about. There's no chance of corrosion because we didn't burn anything through. We didn't harm any paint. We did no further harm to the car. If you couldn't stud weld and that panel needed to be replaced and we were able to repair it or Ryan was able to repair it using this process, all of your factory seams and welds are completely intact. If that's my car, I will take that repair all day, any day um, for here, from here to eternity uh, over having to have that panel replaced. 
Ryan, hats off to you and the guys over at Carl Liner for putting out that repair. Thank you so much for sharing it. And uh, if you're up for questions and answers, it looks like some of these guys have questions about how long did the repair take? Said it looks amazing. Um, perfect. So uh, William Allen, that's exactly what the system is made for is doing damage like that. So look at this, ready for glaze. So there's the before right there, nasty, shoved in all GPR to get to there, uh, saving those factory seams, as much of the factory paint as possible, the factory E-coat on the inside. Again, just a complete and total win for GPR. Guys, any questions that I can answer about this? Uh, if not, maybe pop on over into this repair uh, video in the group or on the Car Aligner Southwest page. And, and talk to Ryan and see if you can get some conversation going. But again, Ryan, thanks for letting us share this. Hats off to a, an absolutely beautiful repair. Loved the save, loved the car, great job. So there you have it. That is our Friday live stream for today. Last call for any questions. I will check one more time before we wrap up. All of the links and descriptions to our trainings and resources are in the description of here. Again, check out that K-Beam, incredible tool. Don't forget about the PowerPod. I saw Brock did share the link through. If you have any questions or comments and you wanna hit us up, message me, message Brock, anybody at Kiko is happy to help you. Thanks for coming along and hanging out with me on a Friday afternoon. We will see you on the next live stream. Things here in Pittsburgh are getting back to normal. We're in the green today, so hopefully life starts to be normal again. We've got an appointment tomorrow to get rid of the, uh, the old quarantine beard and haircut, get this all trimmed up and looking good. Guys, thanks for watching. Let me check these questions one last time. Oh, Jack, K-beam or frame rack to pull that? Uh, it looked like the K-beam. Jack, if you go back and watch, uh, either in the group or rewind this video when we're done, uh, we've actually got a video of him using the K-beam. So thanks for watching. I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.